all right all right we are live all right good evening everyone and welcome back to family life builders tv where we're rebuilding homes and transforming society today i brought a wonderful person uh my pastor i we call him Oga. uh i i have um a great and wonderful encounter with him while we were together while he was leading us as um our drama leader uh, and it has built a lot in me so don't be surprised when you see us do some of um this powerful drama very soon on this channel you won't be surprised because we have the background of what it takes to help families to help people build lives build homes so today i'm introducing you to pastor ajibola and i'm going to tell you a bit about him uh, Pastor Ajibola Fadei is the Chief Financial Officer, the CFO for NCIA Lutz Cancer Care Center, and he has over 20 years of multifunctional experience in the critical area of financial planning and analysis. Is the treasury in the treasury management improving capital structure, uh, shareholders and business growth, financial operations and performance, trend devising, correcting actions, reducing capital spending, and orchestrating analytical tools, and his deep wealth of knowledge and proficiency also spans investment management, budget and performance, reporting, financial reporting, credit control, strategy formulation and implementation. And Mr. Father, he brings into the NLCC and healthcare sector an extensive and deep work experience from reputable organizations such as Secure ID Limited as Group Ed, uh, Finance CFO, Metro Health HMO Limited, and Chief Financial Officer, CFO, uh, Afri Land Properties as Chief Financial Officer, CFO, Law Union and Rock. Insurance PLC as Chief Financial Officer, BG Health Limited Investments Banking and Assets Management as Edge Financial Control, Industrial General Insurance, IGI as Group Ed, Treasury and Midas Bank PLC as Assistant Banking Officer, uh, Mr. Jibola holds degree in accountancy and financial studies and masters in business administration with specialty in finance from reputable institutions. He is a value member of professional institutes such as the uh, Fellow Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, Fellow Institute of Credit Administration of Nigeria, ICA, and Associates Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN. He is a high performance analytically team leader uh, committed to delivering excellence and possesses excellence verbal and written communication skills. Mr. Jibola is happily married with a lovely wife and children. I want to say thank you to you for coming to the show tonight. Uh, I really want to appreciate you. Viewers, tonight it's going to be an awesome time. I promise you, you are going to experience a change in purpose, understanding of purpose, understanding your financial life, planning it, uh, investment, you are going to retire into purpose and life will be meaningful for you from today. I promise you, someone is going to come across this video and the life will never remain the same. Thank you so much, Pastor Jibola, for coming to the show. Please greet the viewers. 
Well, good evening, viewers. It's a pleasure being here, and I'm humbled with all that has been said, and I'm trusting the Lord to help us so that He will speak to us Himself. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, there is something I've seen about families and homes, and it baffles me. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why God has established this platform so that we can actually help families. It pains my heart that people work for a long time and when they retire, statistics say that 65 to 67% of an average elderly person from age 65 actually have to depend on their children after they have finished working. And there was something that I had from Dr. Miles Moore for a long time. When we are working, our work ends. But when we live in purpose, purpose don't end. So we keep doing it. I want you to really help us tonight to clarify these things. And my first question will be, how can couple actually work in purpose along with their career? Well, thank you for having me. One thing people should know, we are all created and we are all here on earth. Uh, everything we do in life should be driven along our purpose. The first problem, before the first issue, before we even go to a couple, as an individual, have you discovered purpose? Because if two people who are married have not discovered purpose, how can they work in purpose? If one of them discover purpose and the other did not discover purpose, how can they yeah. achieve their purpose? Because if, I'm sorry, I'm going to make reference to a lot of Bible. That's Apology fine. for those anybody who is a who's not a non-Christian listening to us. Bible says, can two work together except they agree? If you want to work in purpose, the other person must be ready to support you to work in purpose. So, and who determine purpose? That's the problem. Are we just to be here or not and just struggle for purpose or pick any purpose? No. Purpose is given by God. When, for some of us who are Christian, you have read about Jeremiah. Where even before he was born, God said, I've ordained thee and anointed to be a prophet unto nations. If you are familiar with the story of, of something in the Bible, you know, just like a normal woman, a natural woman, the angel of the Lord appeared to the mother. You have a child, and she was so excited. And she ran to the town, and she ran to the husband. But the husband knew more. Thank God for Mr. Manuel, the father of Samson. He said, please let the angel of the Lord come back. And when he came, he asked the man, he asked the angel of the Lord, how will this child be raised? Mistake will have been made to have compared something with just every other boy. Mm. And you will imagine when every people around are giving their children punk and some other kind of hairstyle, they will want their own son too to look like other children. They want it to look for, and they will be barbing, cutting off the hair, where they don't know they are cutting away the glory of God from his life. They are cutting him away from his purpose. So, one, the two of them must discover purpose. Like I said, if we have, as a parent, my first issue, uh, child tonight is to the, to the parent. Every child you have must fulfill their purpose, not your purpose. That's one of the problems we have on earth. We have children that we have raised to be fulfilling our own purpose. And let me explain. It starts even from the name we give them. Mm. If you look at the name we give to our, our children, the name is about us, about what we want. Ayomide, Uluwashe Gufun, it's about us. Nothing for the child. Mm. But for those who are familiar with the Bible again, if you read Matthew 1.21, the Bible says, his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall deliver his people from their sin. His name was according to his purpose. And Jesus did everything in realization and following following that purpose. At a point in time, Mary has to understand this kind of child that she has given back to, and she has to ensure that 
he fulfilled that purpose. Because at the point that when they went to Jerusalem at the 12, he was in the temple teaching, teaching where the parents were looking for him in another place. Mm. If our yeah. parents, and especially those of us who are young parents, even your, the teenage life of your child must align them with purpose. So as a child, before you have a child, the moment you are, your wife is pregnant as a man, you have to seek the face of God. How do you want this child to be raised? What do you want this child to become? Let me give another example. The general of of the church I worship, New Covenant Church, his mother sent him to UK to go and study mercy. But Jesus appeared to him and he has to go to Bible school. And the mother thought witches has caught up with him. Because the mother didn't understand the purpose. So how will such mother now work with the husband to fulfill her? Because their purpose, one of their purpose is to ensure that the children also fulfill their purpose. Yes. So many people don't understand. They are not even living a purposeful life for themselves. Talking mm. of helping, helping their, either their spouse or their children to fulfill their, 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 their purpose. And that is a major, major, major problem. So for some of us who are a little bit mature, it's not too late to seek the face of God and say, Lord, Bible talk about Moses. He said, I'm Moses' turn. I said, I will now look and see this great sight. And that was when at age 80, he started stepping in onto purpose. He was busy tendering his father in lordship. That was not his purpose. Hmm. He was to lead until he turned and he had God and he was not able to step into purpose. So for us to be able to fulfill purpose, both the man and the spouse must be able to discover their purpose. And we are nobody is in this world just to struggle to exist. Everybody hmm. that we are all here for a purpose. What we are all called for may be different, and it's quite different. Not everybody will be a pastor. Doesn't mean that those who are not pastors are less spiritual. No, not everybody will even be an entrepreneur. If care is not taken, if what, another thing is what God wants you to do, and you say, ah, entrepreneur is what people are making, and you are running to it, you end up having a lot of frustration. Mm. So mm -hmm. we need to discover purpose individually. Now, we cannot come together as a couple. That's one of the issues I've also mm. seen from the people of cancer. Let me mm. give you an example. I have a couple whose vision was just to marry a housewife. <laughs> he just wants his wife to be a housewife. The, the highest kind of job you want the wife to do here in Nigeria is maximum, let her be a teacher. So that by four o'clock, she has finished, she has, she's back home. Mm. But they never discuss. Mm. The wife was not built like that. Mm. The wife wants to have an outstanding career. Mm. The wife loves to develop himself acad herself academically. Mm. And there was crisis at home. Mm. And it came to a time, the marriage was almost collapsing. And I was invited. Mm. And I have to ask the man, what is your dream hope? He told me. Mm. I asked the wife what was her dream home. She told me, believe you me, they were opposite. Mm. The wife want to study. She want to go as far as to study up to PhD. She want to have a fantastic career. She still want to be a caring mother, but she doesn't want to be somebody that will be sitting down. Mm. 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 So the two of them at Logai and two can never work together as they are agree. So. For couple, especially for those who are not married, you must discover your purpose and you must discuss your purpose. Mm. Let the person know, this is who I am. This is who God has called me to be. Today, I can tell you categorically, thank God for the wife I married. If you are to be some other sister, maybe I will have a problem in fulfilling my real purpose, which is to mm. serve God. Mm. I, as a person, initially, I thought, the life I want to live was to be an excellent finance professional. Mm. I want to be a child of God, but I never want to be a pastor. Okay. That's the least thing in my mind. Believe you me, people may be surprised. 
I never wanted to be, but I want to be a good child of God. Mm. I want to be a good child of God. But later, I discovered that the more I grow up, even the, God allowed me by his grace and his mercy to do well career-wise. Mm. And early enough, my career blossomed. But yes. deep down in me, there is no fulfillment. Mm. So I started praying and seeking the face of God and started telling me, this is the path I've created for you. Mm. You will walk, but not that like that. And in fulfilling that, I need to let you know there are some jobs I cannot do. Mm. Because some mm. jobs are highly time consuming and highly demanding. Mm. And I cannot be a pastor that will be Sunday, Sunday Christian. I cannot be a pastor mm. that cannot have time with God. Mm. So you can see that I started more with financial institutions, which are mm. highly more time demanding. I will be in office till mm. 11. I won't go to mm. Bible study. Mm. Only Sunday, Sunday Christian. Even some Sundays, there's are some work to do. And this mm. is the man that God has given me a mandate to serve him in some capacity. Mm. Every time they give me opportunity to minister in church, they said, where is this thing coming from? You are mm. more than what you are giving us. You are just mm. wasting away. Mm. If I marry some other women that are more, too much of career conscious, he will tell, she will tell me, you must remain in that job. Mm. Because mm. those jobs hire me more money. Mm. Those jobs, mm. those companies, uh, boost our ego because of the kind of mm -hmm. the recognition the people give me or I'll give her wherever we go. Mm. At, I, at a point there, I said, I think I need to leave this kind of industry. I mm. need to move to this kind of industry. Mm. And she said, no problem. If you believe that is what God wants you to be. Because she also mm. believed that God wants to use us. Mm. Now, it make it easier for me I'm still safe, I'm still doing well, but I'm in, the, in an industry that is not too mm. much of time consuming. If it's the other industry, I won't be here. They said mm. I'll be doing this from my office. Mm. Because I may be there till 9, till 10, till 11. Now I, I have about time to do Bible study every week. In the last three years, I've been taking Bible study as I travel. Because I do take more pleasure in teaching than every other thing. Mm. So, I have a wife who now joined me to say, let us pray. When we pray, I joined a company that even at a point in time, I have to lose some income. Mm. But she never complained. Mm. If it's another woman, another woman that will be trouble at all. She supported me. Now they told us, go and start a church. We started a church, only me, my wife, and my children. No human being follow us. No complaint. Now, I'm able now, today, thank God, the church has grown. The church is doing well. And do you know, at the end of the day, gradually, the job that looks as if it's not paying well initially, as even meet up with the one I led that mm. are even more time consuming. Because now I don't want to focus. And my wife was able to agree with me. And you know, one of the things my wife did was to say, she's a graduate as I'm a graduate. I never forced her. She said, okay. If we are going to serve God, we need somebody to have more time for the family. You will continue with your job. Let me go and do business. I never force her. Mm -hmm. I never say you must do business so that you must stay at home. No, because the two of us discovered purpose. Mm -hmm. No issue. We don't have to argue. Everything, what we have to do is to kneel down together and take it to God. So now she's doing more business. In my children's school, they hardly know me. They know my wife. She is taking more, take, she's covering those areas for me. I run to the office, from office, take more of the spiritual responsibility in the church and some other thing. She covered more from the home so that our home did not lie. Because we know part of our purpose is also to raise godly children. Have a good career, doing the work of God. She is fulfilling what she's doing. I am fulfilling what we are doing. We are all fulfilled together in what has been committed to our, our hand. Each of us have careers. My own career, I'm doing well. In our business, she's doing well. And by the grace of God, we're able to even raise godly children. And people around us can also benefit. So 
The first thing is the two parties must discover couples because two can never work together if they agree. That is very, very important. So I pray for everyone listening to us tonight. If we have not discovered purpose or wherever they may be this morning, in the afternoon, or any time of the day, they watch this video, that God himself will help them to discover purpose. Both the man, both the woman, and he will give them the humility to be able to accept that even though this is the purpose that God has given me, it doesn't make me inferior to any other person. Because most of us, we want to be like other people. We want to fulfill other people's purpose, not our own purpose. No, stay in your purpose. You will be fulfilled and you'll be shocked what your life will become. What looked like a small thing, somebody, let's look at the example of somebody like Mozion Faith Ministry in Nigeria. They started only with drama. As at the time that even churches did not recognize drama. They look as if you are wasting away. But the man discovered purpose. Thank God she, he married a woman who understood purpose. Because mm. how many sisters at that time mm. can marry a brother that said he's only he's going to full time, not even as a pastor, but in drama. In drama. But all over the world today, the ministry is all over known. They shoot film all over the world. They have film have been watched all over the world. They have been invited all over the world. If he has been an engineer, he might not have made that impact. Mm. He fulfilled purpose. So may we all discover purpose. Mm. If we all discover purpose, it's easy to work together in the fulfillment mm. of purpose. But if you don't discover purpose, what are you fulfilling? Mm. 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 So, so it's very essential. Thank you very much. So it's very essential that in work for you to be able to work in purpose, the first thing as a couple, the first thing is individual must understand their purpose. And the other party in the marriage must also come to understanding of their own purpose as well. And then both of them can come together yeah. And work in purpose yeah. and support in one purpose. another in fulfillment. In and another thing I also heard from that conversation was that it's not only essential for couples to understand their purpose, it's also necessary for them to help their children to achieve their purpose and not make their children fulfill their personal purpose, which starts from even the name that we give to those children that's that's very very essential yeah. thank you so much pastor so my second question is, is let me just add it i'm sorry you. before the question let me just add this statement if you don't understand the purpose what you'll be doing is that you'll be comparing yourself with others mm -hmm. and the bible that's says true. they that compare themselves with themselves mm -hmm. they yes. are not wise mm -hmm. please take over your class okay so so um so the, the second question i have is so right now you and your wife you're both working in purpose now for other couples you know maybe as they are listening they've started thinking about it and eventually they discover what they are supposed to be living for and you know after some time they decide to retire uh, people are always afraid of retirement. So how can people comfortably retire into purpose? And at the same thing, at, at the same time, they will not be lacking in anything. How do they mm. do that? How can couples retire into purpose? Yeah, thank you. One of the major issues we have as an individual it's lack of planning. Mm. And you know, one thing I have seen about even because some of us, we want God to do everything for us, especially mm. in Africa. We want God to, the Bible says we want to build a house that will not sit down and count the cost so that when he has started, he will not be able to complain. People will mock it. Today, every, every country, every country, as what you call external results. Mm. 
If it's like countries who are planning for retirement, they are planning for days where they may not be able to make enough money and they still need to deliver on their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So how would they be able to fulfill those responsibilities? Because what, uh, what we're just saying, retiring to purpose is that, because what doesn't, what make many people not to retire into purpose is the fear of how will I survive? Mm -hmm. Is the mm -hmm. fear of how will I cope? That's the truth. If you give them enough money to take care of them, everybody will say, okay, now I can go on full-time ministry. Okay, now I want to be a motivational speaker. I want to be involved in children. I want, I, I want, that is my purpose. I, I, will be, I want to concentrate on that. But when they look at the fear of, I, need, I have this beast, I have this commitment, how will I fulfill? How will I be able to meet up? Then they started running around. And before you know it, we we'll get to a stage where we don't even have any energy again to run around. Even we will not be able to fulfill that purpose again. So, how can we retire into purpose? We must know that our life is built into three stages. Okay. There is early stage. The early stage of our life, when we are children, teenagers, parents provide for us. Everything they provide for us. We don't need to provide anything for ourselves. They push out clothes, school, rent. You don't pay rent. You don't think about anything. We get to the second stage in our life, which is the middle, a middle stage. And that's the most critical stage, which is where we now work, where we hang. And how we manage that stage determines if we are able to retire to, to purpose or not. Mm. Look at the story in the Bible of Egypt. When God showed Pharaoh that dream, you are going to have seven years of excess. Don't eat up everything in the seven years of excess. Because there will be seven years of famine when you will not be able to live. So that in those seven years of famine, you have a purpose, you have a responsibility to feed your people as a king, to take care of your land, to do good role, to do this, to do that as a human being, to take care of your head, to take care of your house and every other thing. Whatever you do within your own, in court now, seven years of surplus is what we determine. Like I said, every country has what we call excess external uh, reserves. What external reserve means saving against the days the company may not be able to make enough money to take care of themselves. Our one of the issues is that many of us we don't plan properly, and when you see people today who, like, when we want to get married, I told my wife, I don't want more than two children, maximum. I don't want more than two. He said, why? I said, because I don't want to be buying pencil at 60 years. I said, at 60 years, I, want, I don't even want to work for any man. If God give me grace, from 60 years to any other years I live, I want to use it to myself and for God. Mm. If you won't live for 30 years, uh, for 90, to, uh, up to 90 years, that means I'm talking about not doing anything for 30 years. Mm. So that means from the time I walk to the time I will be 60, what I will spend or what I will live on between 60 and 90, I must make plan for it. If I don't do that, there is no way I will be able to fulfill that purpose of serving God on full time for the rest of my life at that age. So if a country can be with all the demand on the country, ah, we need good hospital, we need a good road, we need to build schools, we need to do this. Even with all those demand on the country, they are still saving how much more you as an human being. People will tell me, it's easy for you, Brother Jibola, to talk like that. You are earning good salary. You can plan. Let me know. Everybody, state, not this statement, everybody has enough for his needs, but we don't have enough for our wants. Always, even God promises us to provide only for our needs, not our wants. He said, give us this day our daily bread. My God shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory. What God is giving us today 
for many of us is what we should use to fix our needs today and take the remaining one, invest it, save it in one form or the other, so that when we are retiring, those are the things that will not feed us and we will have no distraction in fulfilling our purpose. But if you are from Africa like I am, it's going to be difficult except you are a strong man. Because people will blackmail you. People will call you name. They will cry on your neck. How they not eating in the morning? How they wearing uh, their children are being out of school? Plan your life. You see, most of us, we pay other people, we don't pay ourselves. And if you don't pay yourself, you can never retire to purpose. You will work till you die. Because everything you have today can never be enough to fulfill, to fulfill people's wants. I have seen places where even the people that are crying to me, if you look at the phone in their hand, it's better than the phone I'm using. Yes, sir. If you see the shoe on their feet, on their feet, it's more than the what I'm wearing. So, how do you retire to purpose? Is plan your life today. The little God has planned to you. Know it clearly that everything is not to be consumed today. Yes, sir. The school my children goes, I plan it. I make sure I put them in good school, but I'm not competing with my friends. Some of my friends. I'm putting their children in school that are paying times three of what we are paying what my children are going to. But I make sure my children go to good school, but not only just to show off. The remaining times three I will be paying, I put it in another form of investment. I already forced myself that this is what I need to put aside. Believe me, if we are disciplined enough, we will be shocked. Look at a small tap that is leaking. Just put a bucket there. Let it be dropping small, small. So when nobody is taking water from that bucket, before you know that bucket will be free and will be throwing away. So we all have enough for our needs, but we don't have enough for our own. We need to dis discipline ourselves and our lifestyle. We need to look for, always try to meet our need and plan. You have to be deliberate about it. It's not nobody. If no. You see, I have seen people that work in big multinationals in Nigeria. Big multinational across industry. I've seen people that work in big multinationals in oil and gas. I've seen people that work in big multinationals in telecom. I've seen people who are senior people, ED directors in banks. Two years after their retirement, you will never believe them. They are another thing completely. Another thing entirely. Because they did not plan. You cannot start planning when you are retiring. If you yes. wait till that time you not started planning, it is too late. From day one, if you have a privilege of having that kind of knowledge, that you start to work, that is the time you start working. That's how you start planning for your retirement. Because you are in your years of surplus. Even though you want to work, even though you have a business, a certain age, you won't have the energy to run around. That is why you are saying that nobody remains the richest man forever. Ideas will change. Things will change. So many things will change, will uplift you. If you they will leave you if you don't want to leave them. I, two people who have been chatting Uganda 20 years ago cannot compete with me today because of the demand in the society. And in the next 20 years, some of us may struggle. You have some basic knowledge, but there are some other things they need. The accountant in those years will be different from the accountant today. So if you have not planned to retire into okay, what you consider as your purpose, you've done your career, you're successful. Now you will retire into purpose. If care is not taking, you will not. I have a man of 84 years that came to my office to come and be begging me for a check just to pay him for one particular service. And I look at him, this man has not planned his life well. 84 years, he was using stick. Because if he said, if he didn't, he was begging me, his car is as, as, it's not working. And you need those money to be able to fix it. Hmm. You, at that age, for you to retire to purpose, without going out of your house, whatever you have, your investment must be working for you. If 
let me say because I don't want to take too much time. If you are, if we must still go out and walk before you eat at anything at certain age, then you can never retire to purpose. You will continue running and running and running. There are days, there are times you must get to without leaving your house, whatever investment in whichever form you are put it. I don't want to be specific because even the dynamics of investment changes from time to time. Mm -hmm. And it also changes from mm -hmm. one country, from one environment to the other. But whichever way, wherever you live, at that age, your thing will be working for you. We don't need to leave your house to earn money. If you must leave your house to earn money, you can never retire to house. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've also learned so much and I put so many of those things uh, in the comments right there. There's, uh, there's something very crucial you mentioned and that is planning. Sure. So how can couples actually really plan? And you mentioned investments. People will say they don't have enough. So how can they invest when they don't actually have enough? So can, will you please, you know, let the people know how can they actually plan and what kind of, you know, investment can they go into that will really help them to keep earning something even in those old age? Like I said before, everybody has enough for their needs, but they don't have enough for their work. Planning in start from even when you are getting married. When I was getting married, people say it's your day, you have to buy all the I said, no, no way. And thank God for my spouse, she agreed with me. Many people want to create misunderstanding between us. saying, it's your day now. Don't let them marry you like black market. You, you are not competing with anybody. Mm -hmm. But can I tell you, we got married in September. By January, we bought a car. Mm -hmm. By May, April, we bought a land. Mm -hmm. By May, we did the foundation. Mm -hmm. These are all the money that would have gone into the wedding. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you have it, no problem. If you have it, no problem. But I know where I'm coming from. Yes, sir. I know what my background is. So I have to be realistic. My wife told me this money, don't I was working in Lagos, we got married in the battle. He said, Don't bring it. Said this one, wherever it it finished, that is all. Anybody who did not see rice to eat, it is because of rice. Has come to our wedding, let him come to Christ for him. Mm. It's cut across every area of our life. You see yes. people from they are getting it. Any couple you see that are borrowing money to do wedding, they're going to have a problem. Yes. Many people, one year after, yes. they are still paying debt after their wedding. Mm. And in the process, the wife will go and get. Pregnant. They will start dancing, they will start uh, the loan they borrow. One mm. thing we must try as much as possible to avoid, don't make credit as part of your life. Except yes. you are using it to acquire an asset that will generate more return than the interest you are paying on it. Mm. But an average young man today, because maybe he's fortunate to get a job in a bank, is only him and his wife, the first thing he will go and do, he will go and rent a three bedroom flat. He and his wife will sleep in one room. Because they have to access the room, before you know it, so many attachments will come in. And those attachments are not bringing one around, will begin to feed all of them. You have to buy, why paying for three bedroom when maybe what you need is just a safe container at that time? As your family grow, you can expand it, you can change. Make live only to meet your needs, not your want. But because all of us want to raise ego, I'm doing well. We are trying to, to, to satisfy the expectation of people on us. 
People will go and buy, borrow money to buy clothes. Borrow, borrow money to buy shoes. You don't need that. You don't need all that. So it goes also from there. Like I said before, I told my wife, I want to have only just two children. You see many people today are having children their income cannot sustain. That is why many people in the Western world are a little bit more better than Africa. It's not because they are doing well more than us financially, but because they live a better plan life. And average people from the Western world have a child. It's easy for them to maintain that child, even get government support, even upon that child. In Africa, you don't have any government support. From primary school, even from crash, you are spending. I told my dad one day, what I was paying when my son was in crash was more than all he paid on me until I finished university. My institution, all true. So, if it is a child you can maintain for now, have that one child. With time, if your financial status, you can have the other one. But we always, you know, we're always over religious in everything. Don't worry, God will provide. God didn't say don't plan. Our major problem is planning, be realistic. Be realistic with your life. Like I said, we got married, we do everything the way we thought we wanted. We already planned that I cannot be. For how many months I can be going out with my wife and we'll be trekking. We wear the same clothes. Me that I will like wearing and go, and Ray will be beating us with uh, the same clothes. No. So by we got married September, by January we we're able to buy car because that money was already there. People push us and they did everything. They called me names. They said this accounting is affecting your brain. I said, if I cannot manage my own life. Why should people commit billions into my hand? At the time I got married in 2005, I was a group head of treasure. Of IGI group, the company that are worth over 20 billion at that time. I was one managing all the treasure, and I've seen that you, if, no matter how big a company is, no matter how big your salary is, if you don't plan, you're still going to be in a mess. When I joined BGA, I have people who are my bosses those days, who are any test three of what I was earning. But they were doing big boy. They were going to designers, all their shirts were designed for them. Their name will be on the shirt, will be on the hand, will be everywhere. Will be, they don't even buy any label again. They use their own label with their name all over the place. I went and built the first house where we, that we built at, at a bar They say it's too far. See, today, some of them are still living in rented apartment. I have left Ibafo. I have come to Lagos, inside Lagos, we built another house. Because all the money we could have been using to pay rent, we are using it to develop another property. Mm. It wasn't mm. easy initially, yes. Now, it's bonus. Every year, we still mm. earn money on that. Mm. And we have another property here. We earn money on that. Too. I'm still doing my job. I'm still earning money. So it's easy for me now to plan. But if I don't discipline myself as at that time, I will not be able to. And like mm. I said, people that are earning times three, times four of what I was earning, they are still living in rented apartment today. Because why? Mm. They must live in Lekki by all means. They must live in Suruleri by all means. Where we are living in Kurodu and living in K2 data. So planning has to be deliberate. You don't pray to plan. No. Just open your eyes, sit down and plan. Look at Moses. Moses was busy killing himself, doing all the work. He didn't sit down to plan, how do I administer these people? And God was speaking to him deliberately. God didn't tell him. So people should just be humble. People should not allow pride. And people not allow people's unnecessary pressure and expectation to make you live above your means. People will force you, they will tell you, at the point in time when I was, the first car I bought was the one small Audi car. There's no name, they did not call me. How are you going to buy Audi? I said, so far you can take me to where I'm going. It's cheaper to maintain. The part was cheap. It doesn't consume fuel. That's all I need as at that time. But will I tell you, from that Audi, the next car I bought was a brand new SUV. Because that time, I can afford it. I was already living in my house. I was able to buy a brand new Tiaroba not to SUV. It's stages. Yes, sir. It's stages. Yes. 
I'm not saying people should not live good life, but wait till when you get here. When you can afford it, no problem. What I earned from those property and in my rent that I saved was able what I was able to use to buy a brand new car. Hmm. Put your money, don't put your money on things that you have to spend more money on. Many things we call assets are liabilities. Even accounting wise, because for your else, even in accounting, for those who are accountants, by accounting standard, IRS and everything, for you every anything to be able to qualify as an asset, the standard says more have the ability to generate future cash flows. Put your money on what can generate future cash flow for you, not what will take future cash flow from you. Mm. Unfortunately, most of us, when we are younger, we are coming up, we put all our money on things that will take future cash flow from us, not that we generate future cash flows for us. So, from that, we are not balanced. So, for me now, the last time I paid rent was 2007. This is 2020, 13 years ago. Imagine my rent, I've been putting it. Together. If it's only that one, I just close my eyes as if I'm still a tenant, and this is what my rent will have worth, and I'm putting in something, and that thing I'm putting in is also generating more money. People will think I have more money than I do, and it's not like that. It's only because I was able to plan and manage what I have. People, mm -hmm. my brothers, has called me name. They fought me, but today people are now learning. Today, like I said, this same teaching, people are now inviting me all over the places. I've taught it in churches. I've taught it in many other places to say, please come and explain to us. And I, some people now say, oh, I wish I've had this 20 years ago. Hmm. What are you doing with 10 shoes? When you hmm. cannot wear more than one out. You don't need more than three shoes at the point, maximum at a point in time. All this small, small thing. Many of us ask clothes that we don't even know they're in our wardrobe. I'm telling you, as a person, one of the things I do, I don't buy a shabby. Because I will, everybody want to get married, will come and give me clothes, I must buy. I must buy the cap. Mm -mm, I will attend your wedding. If you think you don't like it, no. You are not, don't live to please people. Anybody that lives his life to please people can never amount to anything. Either spiritually, financially, or physically. In business-wise, just know what you are doing. Be sure that you are fair to yourself and to the people around you. Be sure that you are not unnecessarily me, but live a disciplined life. So people will, will never have enough if all we want to do is to please the expectation of society or be fulfill our own bloat, over bloated egos. In Africa, we are extremely proud. Ah, we want to say people came to my wedding, everybody hit, everybody down, the team shake the town. Who are you competing with? They want to say when I go out, everybody was looking at me. And if you wear it today, everybody look at you. Will you wear it tomorrow? Everybody still look at you. The moment you wear it, that is all. So always cater for what you need. And if God bless one, you have a wonderful couple. Fantastic. Because it's very, very important. I am fortunate by the grace of God to have a spouse that supported me. Because at a point in time, I would just say, this is the salary. She said, no problem. What do you need to run for the month? If I say, this is what I need, she will give me. The remaining one, she will say, I will manage. And she will say, oh, yeah, we must go. I've called this person. They bought blocks. It's already in the site. They bought this. It's already here. But some other women, if you try that with them, that's trouble. That is why from the beginning, because if the foundation is destroyed, even the righteous man cannot do anything. You have to get it right. Your choice of the person you marry is it cut across every area of your life. It will affect your career, it will affect your finances, it will affect your children, it will affect your purpose in life. You can it's difficult for any man to truly fulfill purpose, or any woman to truly fulfill purpose if he or she made a mistake in the choice of life partner. Even if the person is going to fulfill purpose, he's going to do it the hard way than what a normal person will have done it. So when we have such kind of person, she's ready to 
That was a Christmas. She said, we're not buying clothes. I said, why? She said, because by January, we are roofing that house. I said, ah. he said, even for our small child, he said, don't worry. I will wash the one she has at home. Mm. How many women will accept that from you? Mm. But today, the rent from those houses cannot only uh, clothe us, can even take us on holiday. Mm. Most of my friends those days were on holiday in the US, were on holiday in the UK with the money. I could have said, okay, I also go all the way in US. There's nothing wrong there. But she said, no, we will soon go on. Don't worry. When time comes, we will go on. We will go to US, we'll be tired. We'll go to UK, we'll be tired. Let's tie it to things that whatever we're generating from it is enough mm. to be able to, mm. to take us on holiday. Mm. Mm. What many people have used on holiday could have generated an asset that could have sponsored so many holidays for them. Mm. That is just the way to go. That's just, even a company, every company has what you call reserves. You check financial statement of every company, you will see reserve there. You can't heat up everything. Have mm. reserve for your life. Pay yourself. You can pay yourself. If you pay, like for me as a person, what I teach people is that you pay tax to government. An average tax rate in Nigeria is 18 to 19 percent. You pay God, you pay God on what is left, 10 percent. Pay yourself at least 10 to 20 percent. For me, I said I'm paying myself 20 percent. If 80 percent of what is left is not enough to cater for you, the 100 percent will not be enough. Just close your eyes that that is all you have. That means every Every year, you will have saved 20% of your salary. That means if you work for five years, you will have saved in return the salary of one year. If you now invest it and it has earned compound interest, what you have saved in one year will have, without you working at all, you will be able to sustain it for two, three years. If you now work for 20 years, you are talking about you say something that will be able and look at the compounding effect of whatever you are putting on it, will be able to sustain you another 15 to 20 years. Then why do you need to depend on any child? The problem we have is our wrong mentality to say our children is our inheritance. Any mother said that is a failure. It's my it's my it's my pension. No, because the, my own Bible tells me a good man. Leave inheritance for his children's children. So you should leave enough, not only for yourself, your children should see from it, and your grandchildren should be able to see on it. So if you are going to leave inheritance for your children, children, how would they not be your pension? They cannot be your pension. The moment we have that wrong mentality, we are failed. We must know that we have to plan, pay yourself. Don't ever see everything that's available to you as your income. Take 10% of it, at least. If you are not, if you think 20%, you can't do it. But if you can discipline yourself, do 20% every month. Put it in one class of investment. Look for people who know about investors to advise you from time to time. By the time you do that, if you work for 30 years, you will discover that in retirement, your children can never be your pension. You'll be a blessing to yourself. You'll be a blessing to your children. You will be a blessing to other people around you. And whatever purpose you now want to fulfill, you will fulfill it conveniently. You can be a counselor. You can be a guidance. You can be anything. Even if you want to be a pastor, if you want to be a teacher, you can do it in peace because you don't need to leave your house again to earn money. You cannot. Anytime you leave your house, you are leaving your house to go and fulfill your purpose. If you have to be working for money, at any age above 60, that is a problem. Hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor. You you really you really nailed it. Uh, and there, there's something now that uh, I really want to comment on, and it's on the issue of the fact that just like you have a doctor, or just like you have a pediatrician or just like you have your hairstylist, you have your uh, fashion designer that you take your clothes to, I think it's very essential for people to have a financial advisor. And people don't take that serious 
uh, people just, you know, we just do it as we really can't do it as what we know is what we know. What we don't know, we don't know. So one of the things that will make our planning very easy is for us to have a financial. It's amazing that quite a number of us, including, uh, you know, a lot of young people watching us today, we find it easier to follow uh, celebrities. We see their new designs, um, what they wear, what they do, and our heart is attracted to those things. But there are several financial advisors out there that we can actually follow and learn so many things from. And uh, like what you said now, it's absolutely essential that even before we get married, we need to start learning. Yeah. And this this is is very 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 key. So I love you to as we are rounding off the program. I want you to talk to the young people. You know, just just uh, you know, help us to you know give them some some words words of advice that um that will that will change their life that will change their finances. Okay, thank you. Uh, like I said, I agree with what you have said, hundred percent. That is very, very important point that people watching us tonight must take, learn from. You know, because all of us doing buying and selling, we thought we all know about finance. I have seen many medical doctors that will go and start hospital who will want to be, be in charge of the money and they will run down the hospital. Because he doesn't even understand so many things. All he see was what comes in, and he see how much he paid, and he thought he's making profit. Hmm. By the time you put so many other things, and you put the impact of tax, and so many other things, to it, it's running at a loss. He doesn't think about the depreciation of the asset he's using, because he has bought some asset. They don't, many people don't keep record. Hmm. That's one of our issues. A country as big as the United States, is having a budget. A country as big as Nigeria is having a budget, planning how much they are going to make, how much they are going to spend, and they are monitoring it. How, why can't you do the same thing for your own thousands mm. or your own millions as an individual? Because if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And budget is just planning, just planning of your finances, planning of your income vis-a-vis -vis your expenditure. So that you won't be spending more than what you are earning. So people believe, ah, I need a doctor. When they are sick, they go to a doctor. When they need legal advice, they go to a lawyer. But many people don't think they need a financial advisor. It's easier for me to sell this now because I am a finance professional. Yes. If I'm not a finance professional, I may not have gotten it right. Yes, sir. So there are people you must always have as a friend that they told me. And that's one of advice to young men listening to us tonight. You must have a doctor as a friend. That mm. any point in time you don't feel where well anything, you must be able to put a call across. You must have a lawyer as a friend because some decisions will meet you suddenly and you need somebody to look at it from other angles before you sign your life away. Mm. You must have a pastor as a friend. Mm. Even if you are a pastor, have another pastor as a friend who can look at you in the face and tell you the truth. So that when there are is some issues you want to do, they can tell you, no, I don't think this is right. Then you need a finance person so that they can guide you. Because this, all these people have mentioned, there is no way you live your life that any of your decision will not evolve around them. Any of your decision will evolve around either of these four. Finally, as we are living because of time, to the young men, they'll talk about fulfilling purpose. I want us to know today, the Bible say, all things were created for his pleasure. We are either, I will believe it or not, we are all created by God to fulfill purpose. When we are small, we, 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 we will do so many things, but as we are growing up, we will begin to discover. I thought by being a chartered accountant, by working in a bank, by becoming a CFO is all I needed. But when I got there, I discovered that much more. Bible say, hear this. 
This is the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment. And this is the whole duty of man. Keeping his commandment involves fulfilling your purpose. Keeping the commandment does don't mean just be born again. It doesn't mean uh, don't sin. It goes beyond that. I may not live in sin, but I may not be who God wants me to be. I may be a good Christian, not committing sin, but God wants me to serve him as a pastor, and I am busy chasing money as a CFO. That is not keeping his commandment. So I want to challenge each and every one of us to please seek God. He said, find it, find your purpose. Find your purpose. And when you do that, you will see that in different areas of life, grace will be multiplied to you. I can use my life as a testimony. I'm more fulfilled today because I found purpose. So please, I want to beg with them. When in finding purpose, that's when you can be able to live all this kind of life we are living. Or oh, yes, you will just you just look like a new year resolution. It will look like a new year resolution and we will miss out. So hmm. that's just my advice. Finding God, finding purpose, in just like you have said when we are discussing, even in everything we are doing, our marriage, our career, everything should help us in fulfilling purpose. I think mm. I want to stop because I don't want to start preaching. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. Thank you so much, Pastor Chibola. Uh, I really, really appreciate you coming to the show tonight. We really want to say a big thank you. Thank you. I want to say a big thank you to your wife for releasing you. It's, it's a pleasure. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, how can you find you? What do you um do you offer any service um to people or except for pastoring or if you want uh, people to worship with you, just just describe where you are and how they can you know how you can be of service to them. I'm a man of many parts. The most important part for me today is one is I'm a pastor. I pastored at uh, New Covenant Church K2 Yano School uh, in Lagos. We are on the Lagos uh, Ikorodo Expressway. It's after between K2 and my 12. The church is on the road there. You can put my number across. People can reach out to me if anybody wants to be part of us. We're on Facebook. We even have a website, ncck2.com. We are on New, uh, NCC, New Covenant Church K2 on Facebook. I see many of my messages there. So I'm not in the box here. Yeah. So that people can see it and they can link it with you. Uh, put it ncck2.com. Can put my number there. I also act as consultant in my profession. More okay. now, I have more passion with consulting. I don't go to auditing. I don't have passion for auditing. But I have passion more for training, facilitating okay. on finance. Treasury, investment management, corporate finance, but much more corporate governance. I have more passion for corporate governance because I've seen many great institutions fall because of lack of corporate governance. And it starts from individual to organization and everything. So I facilitate on corporate governance, I facilitate on different aspects of finance, investment, accounting. Those are more what I do. And any other person that generally anybody that need counseling, career guide, I do more of career guide, but because of time, that's I am not doing much on that one. But yes, I can still help if anybody feels want to want to contact me. I'm available to be of help. Spiritually, if anybody needs a spiritual guide, how can I find purpose? How can I know God? I'm having issues in my marriage. God has given me grace in the areas of marriage. I'm able to counsel so many couples. If anybody feel like he's having issues in the area of marriage and in need counseling, God has given us a grace. If it is what the family, me and my wife always do it together. I bring my wife in. If they want us to come in as a couple to talk to them and see how their family can be better, God has given us grace in that area as well. 
I'm a teacher of the world. I, in fact, my calling is teaching. When it's special, they say, come and teach Bible. I can teach from morning to night. That's where I find joy and fulfillment. Yes. Thank you so much, Pastor Jibola. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, our viewers. Thank you for watching this episode of Building Family Finance. And I know that today you have learned so much on the show. So keep changing, keep transforming, because transformation is one step at a time. And things really work when we work it. Have a wonderful evening, everyone, and bye for now. Thank you so much. Bye.